The European Space Agency recently had a call for astronauts and they emphasized, you know, for women to apply and also people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, NASA launched the Artemis project, which aims to take us back to the moon and to put the first woman on the moon and also a person of color. Uh, and also finally starting to shift from using manned spaceflight to human spaceflight. So good things are happening, it's just that it's not happening quick enough, you know, we need to accelerate this development. Hello and welcome to the Game Changers She Talks, brought to you by Credit Suisse. I'm Yvonne Shan. In this video series, we want to share stories of women whose lives and work experiences in the technology arena will inspire young generations of female innovators and creators. Sharing their stories advances the leading and innovative ideas that they care about, creating a positive ripple effect. Today, we head to space and cast light on women's access to this industry, not just as astronauts, but as users and creators of space science. Now, did you know, over 500 people have traveled to space, but only 11% are women. And out of 225 spacewalks, just 15 were done by females. Now, according to the United Nations, women represent about 20% of the space industry workforce. That's a proportion that has not changed since 30 years ago. While it's obvious, women's participation in the space industry is still far from equal. But there are signs of progress. The Space for Women program, run by the UN Office of Outer Space Affairs, works to facilitate an equal role for women and girls in space science. In fact, Space for Women addresses the sustainable development goals of quality education and gender equality. It's therefore vital that we level the playing field here as space tends to offer high earning jobs in a fast growing sector, providing women with more financial freedom. Today, I'm pleased to be speaking to a female trailblazer in the space stratosphere, Karen Nils' daughter, astropreneur, future astronaut, and renowned advisor to the tech and space industry. A global advocate for women, Karen has used the Space for Women platform to empower females. She's also passionate about advancing humanity into space and applying that technology to foster sustainable business solutions on Earth. Karen has been awarded Tech Women of the Year in Sweden, and she's also been recognized on the inaugural list of 100 women in tech in Singapore. Welcome, Karen. So good to have you here in studio with me today. Thank you, Yvonne, and thank you for that kind introduction. It's great to be here. Likewise, looking forward to our conversation. Now, can you tell us a little bit more about your personal story and journey into aerospace and what made you set up mm. Spaceport Sweden? Yeah, no, so I think for me, space has come full circle. Uh, I was born in Sweden and I remember as a child how I would look up in the sky, you know, with awe and wonder. And I was quite fascinated by space. And eventually I ended up studying math and physics and I did a big project on, on space and how it was opening up. Um, however, it wasn't an immediate choice for me. And I think perhaps at the time I didn't have any role models as such and none of my friends were sort of heading in that direction. Uh, and also I was very interested in the business sides of things. So I studied um, uh, strategic business management and leadership. I did an executive MBA and, um, and I started out in London. I worked, worked in, the space, in the tourism industry. Um, and of course, being based in London, we have Sir Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic. That's so right. I was following that with excitement mm -hmm. and I went to a few conferences and that sort of reignited my, my interest and my passion for space. And, and uh, at the same time, we also saw a group of companies in Sweden that were exploring the opportunity to um, establish a launch site for human space travel. And they reached out to me and we had a conversation if I would be interested in leading this effort, which was just a heartbeat decision. And I couldn't think of a more exciting it's like a challenge. Dream come true. Yeah. And, and again, it felt like, you know, the, the, it came full circle for me. So, um, so I moved from, from London to uh, here in our lap plan above the Arctic Circle and we started to lay the foundation and develop what is today Space for Sweden. That's amazing. So that interest in space already started from a very young age. Mm -hmm. uh, and you've been in this industry for a many number of years now. Can you tell us or give us an illustration of perhaps the unconscious bias or gender stereotypes that's present in this industry? Yeah, as you mentioned in the introduction, you know, the space industry, there's only 20 percent, um, you know, women rep represented. And this is mirrored everywhere you go. You know, if you're at a conference, you'll see a, um, a sea of men, predominantly white men. Mm -hmm. and 
and the same when it comes to panelists or, or speakers. So even, you know, the images and stories that are being told about space. And, and it's being reinforced, right? Yeah, it is. And if you look historically, you know, women weren't even thought to be suitable for space travel. Uh, and much of the infrastructure developed were developed by men for men. Everything from um, G suits for training in the centrifuge <gasps> to actually have the toilet works on the space station. Oh my goodness! Uh, but obviously, the opposite has been proven. You know, women are just as as um, capable. Um, capable and able to go into space. But but only recently, you know, in 2019, uh, NASA had to cancel and postpone uh, the first ever all female spacewalk because there weren't enough functioning spacesuits available that would fit a smaller frame. Oh, well, look at that! So, uh, <sighs> but you know, we're seeing signs of change. You know. The European Space Agency recently had a call for astronauts and they emphasized, you know, for women to apply and also people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, NASA launched the Artemis project, which aims to take us back to the moon and to put the first woman on the moon and also a person of color. Uh, and also finally starting to shift from using manned spaceflight to human spaceflight. Mm -hmm. So good things are happening. It's just that it, it's not happening quick enough. You know, we need to accelerate this development. So you're seeing this push uh, for inclusivity, even for people with disabilities. Uh, I like that. I want to go a little bit more into that topic. Uh, according to the latest CS Gender 3000 report 2021, there are still considerable imbalances uh, for female representation in STEM fields. But on the flip side, it's been shown that diversity is the key driver for innovation. Karen, you are a huge advocate for gender inclusivity and diversity in this industry. Why does it make community and business sense? Yeah, I think there's just mounting evidence uh, that in diversity inclusion, uh, you know, not only makes uh, business and community sense, but I think it's a necessity uh, in today's environment. You know, companies need to continuously innovate and, and to stay competitive. You know, I think they need to to um, attract uh, a diverse workforce. And if you're able to get different skill sets and perspective, I think you can foster an organization that's much more creative. Uh, I think you can problem solve much more efficiently. Uh, and, and not least, you know, you'll be able to develop better products and services that also cater to much bigger market. Mm. Um, and it's proven, you know, that companies that do this successfully you know, they outperform their, their peers financially. They see a much higher employee engagement and performance. And also they have a much bigger talent pipeline. That's right. Mm. I think um, this evidence has shown too that just focusing solely on increasing the talent pool may not be enough to address some mm. of the gender imbalances in STEM fields, right? Reports have shown that 90% of future jobs mm. will need STEM-related skills. I don't know if I'm in trouble because um, I remembered doing physics. The last time I did physics, I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. But with 90% of the jobs needing STEM-related skills, yeah. that also means females, women, girls, they need to have the necessary skills mm. to, to be able to compete in the future employment market. But like we said, the numbers are dismal. One in five space industry workers are females. So how can we also retain female talent that want to stay in their scientific careers? What are some of the major barriers to this? Yeah, you, like, like you mentioned, you know, it's absolutely critical to the success of the industry that we have become much more better at retaining uh, female talent. And unfortunately, we're seeing how women fall behind in promotions, how there are pay gaps, but also how there is a lack of up-to-date policies and structures that actually focuses on um, both attraction and retention. Um, so that's something, you know, we have to be very conscious and work um, deliberately with. But, but also a huge challenge for us is to attract women in the first place. And there's research that show that at middle school, mm. when students are 10 to 14 years old, that's the most critical period to nurture their interest in, in math and, and um, science. So as educators, as leaders, as parents and society at large, you know, we really need to, to make a huge effort here because otherwise we, we stand to lose them and we might lose them forever. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you studied math and physics, mm. but at that time you didn't really have a lot of role models. Oh, correct. So we need to change that. And it yeah. starts with the education system, mm. right? Is, th is that about attracting, how we can attract even more girls from a young age to go into STEM related fields? Yes, I think there are some very straightforward actions that we can all do today. Okay. You know, I think number one is showcasing role models, you know, in everything that we like do. yourself. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, but secondly, I also think it's very important that we connect young people with professionals from the industry to give them, an, you know, an opportunity to talk about what it's like to work in the industry and what experiences they have and, and for them to share share all the exciting opportunities mm -hmm. uh, that there are. And of course, mentorship and coaching is also important, but, but also to give... Um, you know, give them opportunity to have hands-on experience, you know, to get them experience. to try 
you know, what it's like working in the industry and whether that's through an internship or a project or, you know, something you do during your summer vacation, mm -hmm. you know. And, and another important area where I think a lot of unconscious bias come into is how we portray and how we describe, you know, for example, a course at school or a project or, or even a job. Mm -hmm. You know, we need to make sure that we, we word it and show images that attract both men and women. Right, gender balanced job descriptions exactly. rather than, okay, this one needs someone with a bigger physique, taller, more suitable to, you know, turn the cranks on something. Yeah. That makes but, a lot of sense. But I also think that we need to recognize that this is not a women's challenge. You know, this is a, a challenge for all of society, society. and, and uh, media has a huge role to play here. Mm -hmm. And particularly young people are very influenced about images and movies and stories that yes. they hear. Uh, and also when it comes to toy manufacturers and retailers, mm -hmm. you know, there's still a huge push for girl stuff versus boy stuff. You know, make it gender neutral yeah. and organize yourself a theme and function instead. And, you know, perhaps you reach a bigger market even. Um, I mean, how often do you see a doll wearing a spacesuit right now? I, maybe only one or two, but yeah. they're not the ones that the toy manufacturers may be pushing. No, exactly. you know, in the sales or in window displays, no, right? you're right. And, and I really feel, uh, what you said really resonated because when I did physics mm -hmm. uh, way back when, I think it just fell through the cracks. It didn't turn out to be interesting because there was no one there mm. to show me what could have been. Right. I think here also parents play a very important role. You know, I think we need to, to be conscious and perhaps a little bit more deliberate also in the choices that we make. Mm. You know, what toys do we buy and what stories do we read and what yeah. movies do we watch? Mm. And, and actually often we see also how girls are pushed to try boy stuff, but not the other way around. So I think, you know, we need to, to be aware of this. And, and then, you know, ultimately, of course, this is led from the top. It has to be led from the top. So I also think the governments and, and corporations, we need to... Uh, make this a priority. Mm -hmm. and, and as you mentioned, you know, the future, you know, 90% of jobs are going to require some kind of STEM skills. That's right. So we must make sure that we don't leave women and girls behind. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't mm -hmm. agree more. Karen, you're also very actively involved in UN Space for Women. Tell us a bit more about your work there and how it's aiming to achieve better gender balance in the industry. Yeah, so the, the UN Office for Outer Space Affair recognizes, you know, that women's participation is absolutely critical to mm -hmm. the success of the industry. And, you know, not much has happened in the past 30 years. You know, we're still at a 20% of, of the change workshop. Them. Like you said, it's not moving fast enough. No, it's not. Uh, so action needs to be taken. So um, um, they had a call to action and invited uh, leaders from all over the world to, to meet and start discussing what initiatives can we do together. And we had the first meeting at UN Women in New York in 2017, and we laid the foundation to what is today a global project and it's got two parts as uh, so one is a mentorship program and the other one is um, a professional network and through both of these we connect um, primarily women but also men uh, to representatives from the industry you know uh, from all levels and all fields uh, but we also help them be part of a bigger community you know where they can connect with peers and they can support each other through through university or studies or, you know, as they progress throughout their career. Mm. So, you know, the overall objective is really to try to attract more girls into STEM education and, and more women to the space industry and to help progress women in the industry, but, but also to make sure that the benefits of space and space technology reach women across all over the world. Mm. It sounds like a very comprehensive mm. uh, outreach program, right? Not, not only to attract, but to ensure that benefits are spread, you know, widely received uh, by, by all throughout the world. Can you tell me too uh, more about your mission to space and how do you think that can help humanity? I mean, what gets you excited about donning the space suit? Mm. Yeah, I, think, I mean, we're at the dawn of a new era. You know, space used to be in the domain of governments only, but now we're entering an entrepreneurial area. And we see how more countries than ever are investing in space and how startups and entrepreneurs and investors... Yeah, private you know, investors. Focus, yes, right. are focusing on space. And, you know, space has always been a platform for cutting-edge research, but also to develop new types of medicines and material and do scientific exploration. And, and really, we depend on, you know, space technology in our everyday lives. We use satellites for communication or navigation or to forecast the weather or for, for global health or city planning. Mm. Um, and something, two areas that I'm um, extra excited about is one, uh, the development of satellites mm -hmm. and how they are becoming much, much smaller, you know, some only weighing a few grams. And with miniaturization Amazing. and standardization, it's become much more cheaper. And that means that not only startups, but also students have access to, to develop and launch a satellite. And, you know, the wide array of 
applications that they come up with. But the other part of this is also uh, how we're seeing constellations of satellites being deployed. And with these con constellations, finally, mm -hmm. we are going to be able to bring internet to all corners of the world. So the ah, World Wide Web is right. finally becoming worldwide. Right. And if you have access to the internet, you know, have access to education, yes. to medical support, set up a business, connect with peers. I mean, the, the opportunities are just limitless. So, um, and then the other part, which obviously I'm thrilled about is, is human spaceflight. You know, I think it's in, in our human DNA to, to push the boundaries and yes. to keep exploring. And with the t technology that's being developed today, you know, we will be able to go further than we've ever been before. And uh, to date, you know, less than 600 people have been to space, but everyone that's gone uh, talks about this profound impact uh, it has on them. It's called the overview effect. Mm -hmm. And it's how you see Earth from space and it doesn't have any, uh, you know, you can't see any country borders. You don't see different flags. You know, you don't see any difference between people. We're all one and how we're protected by this thin layer, the ozone uh, yeah. layer. So, you know, I just think, um, uh, you know, you know, space is humanity's greatest uh, challenge and, and adventure. I just think it brings out the the best of us. Uh, and I'm just thrilled to think about what will happen when thousands and thousands of people, smart and creative people, will get to experience this, you know, all the ideas and, and innovations that will come. You know, Karen, I'm sitting here in the same space as you, and I can really feel your excitement, your passion and your love for what you do emanating from you and you know I, I also cannot wait uh, for the day where I get to don a space suit mm. and go on a space flight because yeah. it doesn't seem impossible. Yeah. I watched with bated breath as uh, Sir Richard Branson and his team took their first uh, private flight out um, you know and commercializing uh, space flights. What does that mean for the rest of us? That, yeah. uh, right it's no longer our uh, uh, who has uh, she has and he has not you know so it's it's a it's making it just a lot more equitable yeah. and accessible for many many people yeah. you've often said that uh, we cannot just adapt to change right change you said needs to happen needs to happen faster but adapting is not enough and that we need to lead that change tell us what you mean by that yeah, no, so I think we, we, we live in a rapidly changing environment uh, and, uh, you know, an in innovation economy where really the only constant is change. Uh, and I think to stay relevant, to stay competitive, you know, we need to set audacious goals uh, to attract talent, but also when it comes to the empowerment of women. Uh, you know, we're living in the fourth industrial revolution and we're seeing how technology is the key driver that transforms all sectors and industries. And, and again, how future jobs are going to require STEM and, and technological skills. So, you know, it's about time that we start accelerating and really move the needle uh, for women mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, help enable them to and harness all the talent of the world. And you're very big on mentorship as well. You've said before that you always aim to bring a seat to the table? Yeah, so I think this is absolutely critical. And that's my message also to, I think, you know, young women and, and girls out there, you know, make sure that you surround yourself with people that inspire you and that believe in you, but also that challenge you and, and compliment you and your skill set. Um, you know, call out injustice, but also pay it forward. You know, bring that extra seat to the table. And, and you know, together we recreate this positive force for change. Call out injustice, but also pay it forward, mm. right? Helping others yes. uh, because you've been at the same time enabled by mm. other females. Mm -hmm. Karen, what would you say to your daughter who is five today mm. that you think would still be relevant for her when she's 20 years old and on the cusp of embarking on her own career journey? Yeah, I mean, I think we're all born to be great. Uh, you know, so I encourage her to always aim high, to reach for the star and to follow her dreams. Uh, and to dream big because it is her dreams that, you know, will inspire her actions and they will set her on the right path. Follow her dreams and reach for the stars. Now, in some of your bios, you're described as a future astronaut. So when is it your turn to go to space? Oh, I can't be seen now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, so we see now how the space operators, uh, you know, they just launched their commercial programs and, um, and I'm, I'm going to fly with Virgin Galactic and they're just finalizing their their test flight program. So oh I hope goodness. within a few years time that I that I get to That's go. That's very, very this. soon. It so is. you'll keep us posted when oh, you go and come yeah, I'll back. I'll take you with me. Oh, <laughs> yes, please. And we'll have that overview effect. Indeed. I mean, I'm going, I'm going to read up a little bit more about that, but um, I can only imagine what it must feel like to be this minuscule thing looking at the whole of Earth. Yeah. And you've caught glimpses of that. 
Yeah, I mean, through, I mean, I obviously have a lot of colleagues that yes. have, they've had the opportunity and, and, you've and seen listening the to this story. It's so amazing. Um, and also when I did my centrifuge training, mm. um, they simulated a space flight. So it felt like you actually were elevated into space and, and through imagery and, and the, you know, the background noise. It, it felt like you had almost that experience. So. That, that actually sounds... brought tears to my eyes because it was so, it, that, that in itself was profound. So I can oh only imagine God. what the real thing is going to be. Yeah. That sounds amazing. Karen, I can't wait for you to go to space Thank and come you. back. Um, even if you get to go first before me, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I wish we wish you all the best. Thank you. Um, thank you for this wonderful conversation today. It's great to be able to speak to a role model like yourself. And I also hope my, my kids and future generations will have more role models like you to look up to. So thank, thank you, you so, so much. Ron. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we've been speaking to Karen Nils daughter, astropreneur and renowned industry expert for the space industry. Thank you so much for joining us for this episode of the Game Changers Street Talks brought to you by Credit Suisse. We will see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>